Hello everyone, uh, as I said, my name is Alex Patron, and welcome to the art of theatrical engineering. There it goes again. This, to be honest, it's just a circle, don't worry. I know, revolutionary, right? Well, this particular circle is what I call the comfort zone. And the comfort zone is, is the range in which all the actions people will make in their life, it kinda, that's just kind of where it happens. And for the purpose of this demonstration, let's pretend that this beautiful red carpet I'm standing on is my comfort zone. And the way that I would define comfort zones, I would say that there are two main distinctions of comfort zones in this world. For some people, the walls of their comfort zone are kind of like a membrane. So if they want to try something new, they can just reach out and try the thing. And if they like it, they bring it back with them. Other people, it's not as simple. For other people, their walls are made of concrete. So for no, no matter how hard they want to try something new, or how matter it sounds fascinating, they can't, it's not them to do so. It's like asking them to jump out of an airplane without a parachute. Who does that? And I should know, I used to be like that. And so for me, growing up, I knew I always wanted to do something with STEM. To be honest, I just wanted a lab coat, but you know, you win, you win some, you lose some. And so you, imagine, you might imagine that my comfort zone looks something a little like this. And not only did, did it just kind of look like this and how I felt about it, other people may have seen my comfort zone just like this as well. So imagine the shock to my friends and family when I told them I wanted to try out for theater. I know, they, you could tell they were a little bit concerned. And you could probably imagine why. To most people, theater looks something kind of like this. You know, bright colorful costumes, singing and dancing, 9,000 pounds of makeup on your face. And just pretending like there's nothing, not a care in the world. But what if I told you that my interest wasn't exactly being on front of the stage, but was by working behind it as a technician. During my time with the Lebanon Trail High School Theater the Department, I worked on a whole bunch of shows as a properties master. I worked with a lovely group of people like, the, like these right above me, and it was our job to provide the handheld um, props, something like this beautiful prop right here, to stage decorations, maybe something like the microphone, and that was kind of what we did. And we, we were, and it was, just, it was a phenom it was amazing, and eventually we'd be, we'd be thrown projects our way that were just a little out of our wheelhouse that made us that had us test our creative and technical building and expertise, such as, I don't know, a night friendly ogre or an ogre friendly night helmet, or a 1930s style camera that ac that actually lit up when you took a picture. I know, right? Or a duct tape Minecraft Steve costume for a Halloween party. But no matter what the project was, we learned not only team building, we didn't learn how to just work as a team. I learned how to be a manager, I learned how to delegate work, I learned how to be a leader. And now I have a question for y'all. Who here knows about the B word? Nope, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Not that B word, the, the one that summons Michael Keaton, Beetlejuice. So who here has seen the movie Beetlejuice? All right, we got a couple. Who here knows that there was a Tony Award winning Broadway show about it? Who here has seen it? I know, thank COVID. Well, for those who have not seen it, oh, most of, well, one more thing before that, sometimes the makeup was also really fun, to be honest. The makeup was great. But now, on to Beetlejuice. This is the set to, to the Maitland's home in the, for the Beetlejuice musical. And for some people who haven't seen the musical yet, what might, what, uh, you might imagine that when, when all of a sudden, when it goes from act one, uh, from, uh, from the first half to the second half, the scene changes to something like this. And what might surprise you is that this is the exact same set. It's the same set. Weird, right? The way that it was achieved was that they didn't make a new set, they didn't just do like, they didn't like build something completely new. What they did is that the whole framework for the, for the set is one thing. The, way, the only changes they made were to lighting, the basic furniture, and the walls. What I mean by that is, all the walls that you see here on this set are essentially magnetic panels that they just pop off but during intermission. Fascinating, right? The way that they, in, so instead of going through the process of building an entirely new set, they just did it the simple, they did it something simple, they did something fast, and they did something that made the process faster. 
Those are elements of theater, or not just, not just theater, those are elements of engineering. Optimization of a process is the main core of industrial engineering. Making something easy to m change and easy to work, to make the workflow faster, that's mechanical engineering, just right there. And these elements of STEM don't just apply to the onstage presence, they also work backstage in the chain of command. So this is the kind of like the uh, the tech. This is oh, oh my sorry. This is the technical chain of command for technical theater. At the top, we have our technical director. The technical director is the person in charge of making sure all the technology and every all the, not just all the all the technology up in the booth, all the sets is made, paint, color, everything. All of that is everything that is essentially not the actors is under their jurisdiction. The stage manager is the person making sure everything is moving, sl moving quickly, mo everything's working well, everyone's hitting their cues, and that everyone knows their part. The assistant tech direct technical director is the one essentially helping design the set, making sure things are getting made. They're the one in charge of construction. Our assistant stage managers are the people uh, in what we call the wings, which are the backstage areas of, 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 uh, of the stage. They're the ones making sure that all the commands from the, from the stage manager up in the booth are getting communicated to the, to the people backstage. Our leads are the people that are in charge of each department. We have, they're essentially like the managers, if you will. We have our set manager, our lights manager, props manager. We have our, we have sound, lighting, and even fly crew, which are the people in charge of the curtains. And of course, you can't have any criminal enterprise without a couple minions. Now, let's redefine some of these topics, or some of these titles. The technical director is in charge of everything technology-wise, right? So they're, they're kind of like a CTO, if you will. Stage managers and assistant tech directors make sure, are the ones kind of in charge of making sure everything's getting run and everything's working in their department. So they're kind of like a vice president or a president, if you will. You can't have any operation work without an operations director. And like I said earlier, an, a lead is essentially just a fancy way of saying manager. And of course, you have your workforce and your operations crew. Just with that, just with a little bit of redefinition, we have turned a technical, oh my, this mic hates me. We've turned, this we've turned a technical theater chain of command into a STEM corporation one. And for those who are wondering, about, wait, what about acting? What about theater? Let's apply the same logic here. Acting is a rehearsed performance given to an audience of co consumers. Isn't that just what I'm doing right now? Think about that for a bit. Now, I do have a, one quick question. Who knows what is the biggest corporate, now we've, talk, now we've been talking about how they're similar, let's talk about how we can combine them. Who here knows what is the biggest example of a combination of, of theatrics with STEM in the world? Gorsh, folks, I'm sorry, that was really bad, that was bad, I'm sorry. It's a Disney Corporation. And well, Disney, well, when you first think of Disney, a lot of people think about the movies that they put, that they pump out. They pump out like seven a year, which is amazing. But we're going to focus on their theme parks. And what you might know is that the, their theme parks are among the most technologically advanced consumer locations on the planet. Disneyland California, Disney, uh, Walt Disney World, Disneyland Tokyo, Tokyo Disney Sea, Dis Disneyland Shanghai, Disneyland Hong Kong, Disney, uh, Disneyland Paris. All these locations have some of the, of the top cutting edge technology applied to entertainment. For example, this lovely fellow is an animatronic that is swung into the air and does poses. In reality, this is the prototype for the Spider-Man animatronic coming to Disneyland, California, and the new Avengers, Avengers expansion to California Adventure. He has, he has a gyroscopic sensor and an alt altitude sensor, so the second that he is yeeted into the air at the highest point, he, he does a Spider-Man pose. This, this is STEM being applied to theatrics. Or how about, let's go to Shanghai. Over in Shanghai, they have the Tron ride, which takes the beloved Tron cycles from Disney, from the Tron film, from the Tron, bleh, Tron sequel, Tron Legacy, and has it as a roller coaster. This is stuff they took, instead of taking real life and putting it into entertainment, they took entertainment and put it into real life. And on that topic, there's something I want to show you guys. So I don't want to just roll up to Disney and, and my application and not have anything to show. So over the course of the last 
five months, I've been working on a, pro on a pet project. I have an idea to add an expansion to Magic Kingdom. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I give you Tron. Okay, when I said I was, I was part of theater arts, I never emphasized arts, okay? But luckily I have a friend who does. So after collaborating with my friend Michael Green, who is an arts, technology, and emerging communications major over at University of Texas at Dallas, we present to you Tronland. This is just one of the first few steps in this project, in this personal project that I'll be working on. And I never said I'll be working on it alone. Both, it's something that applies to both theater and STEM is that nothing is ever just a solo project. This is something that a whole bunch of people takes together to make something work. And this, and here is something at this park. I'm, I'm not just planning on doing simple rides. I have ideas for new interactive experiences, virtual reality with ha and haptic information on technology, all of this stuff. And I'm, I've only been working on this for a couple of months. Imagine what I can do with a team of people in a couple of years. So, what's the thing? What's the deal? What's, what's the chain reaction we're looking for? I think it's just about time that we stop having this prejudice against theatrics and theater. We've, and, if, and what I mean by that is, like, like we said earlier with the cat, with cats and with that example, a lot of people assume that you don't really get anything out of theater, right? It, it's just, it's theater, how do you play it anywhere else? But think about this, imagine what would happen if we took a set designer and applied, him to archi applied, applied their knowledge to architecture. Imagine if we apply, if we take other thespians, apply them to an engineering idea that's not just as cut and dry as a, a, a simple equation on a piece of paper. Or imagine if we take a, an audio engineer and have them work with a team of sound designers for a theatrics performance. And imagine what they could do to revolutionize um, uh, sound technology across the globe. And I know what I'm saying here is really big. It's like, uh, what, what are you trying me to, what? what, what is this, what is this? This is so big, this is too big for me to handle. This is outside my comfort zone. Is it? Well, and I know it sounds like a really big thing, but imagine once you ta start taking those few steps, those concrete walls around you, they're gonna become gateways to new innovations and new technologies across the world. To draw inspiration from Into the Spider-Verse, which is an animated film, all it takes is a leap of faith. And hey, a leap of faith may sound very big, but it starts with one small step. Thank you. <laughs>